Do you wish that there was a simpler way to debug your code than using tons of debug.log statements? Well, then continue watching and let me show you how to integrate Visual Studio with Unity so you can take advantage of the debugger. You will then be able to insert breakpoints to pause execution of the code so you can inspect all of the values as the game is playing. Let's imagine that you are working on your player controller and you are trying to pick up some coins. So you have done all of the code and now you are testing it. So you go and try to pick up all of the coins and we can see that we can pick up the first coin. But for some reason we cannot pick up the second coin. And when we pick up the third coin, you see that our score is not increased. So there are two issues we have to fix. The first, probably faster approach is to go into the code and just look through it to try to find the mistake. But if you don't find it at the first glance, then you may want to add some debug.logs, but you don't really know where to add them, so you would probably end up with tens of debug.logs. But what is much more effective is debugging your games using the integrated Visual Studio debugger. So first we need to connect Unity with Visual Studio. We can do this at the top panel. So what I like to do is to say the attach to Unity and play, and you have to select your machine here. So I will say this one, and we can simply click the button. It's going to build some files and compile all of the code, because the files for debugging are a bit different than the files for playing, and we can see back in Unity it's already playing the game. And if we take a look back into the Visual Studio, we can see it's running because we have the pause here, which means that we are debugging using the Visual Studio, but right now we haven't really added any breakpoints using which we could debug, so there is no point in continuing, I will just stop it for now, which you can see also stops the game in Unity. To add some breakpoints into the code that allow us to stop the code at some point, it's really simple, you can go into the left panel you see here and simply click on the line where you want to add the breakpoint. So I'm going to edit at the start of the on trigger enter to the function, because that's likely the function in which the problem is. Again, we can attach to unit and play. So we are playing, we can try to connect these coins as we are moving pretty slowly. We can see the game paused, we cannot really move anymore, and in the Visual Studio, we can see that we are on this yellow line. Most importantly, down here at the bottom, we have new window called Autos, in which you can see all of the variables and their values. The same thing we can do just by hovering over them. So let's say that we are interested in what the collision is. So I can hover over it. I see there's some coin. There's the box collider. I can even expand this to see some other information. Let's take a look at the base. You can see some attached rigid body, bounce, and all of that fancy information that can be really useful. Let's take a look at some of the tools that allow us to navigate through the code, which you can see at the top, and also the shortcuts. So if you step over, we can simply go to the next line that is going to execute, so we can see everything that is happening. This is really useful. So we can just go through the code, see that we are going into the first if statement. This one seems to be true, because we have gotten inside of its body. Let's go further. So we are trying to get the component, call it object. We can see that we have gotten it. Let's continue. We are calling the pickup function. And if you want to get inside of the function, you can do this using the step into. So let's click that. And now we are inside of the pickable script, which I have placed on the coins. We can see it is just calling the score manager. So let's go over and step inside. Here we can see it is successfully calling the add score function. We can also see all of the variables down here. So we see that the score right now is at zero. And if we proceed further, we should see that, yep, it is set to 15, which is the amount that we want to add when we collect the coin. And we can see it is also setting the text. Right now it is on zero. We go further. We should see it's on 15. Yep, that works right. And before debugging further, let's talk about conditional breakpoints. So in this case, the error or the bug is happening only with two of the coins. It is not happening with all of them. So if there is only some case which you want to debug, you can also add conditions into the breakpoints. So I will just pause the game and we will then run it again. So you can simply right click into the breakpoint, go into conditions, and the condition you are writing here is the same that you'll be writing inside of your if statement. So I'm only going to run the breakpoint when we collide with the second coin, not with the first one, because the first one works all right, so we don't need to pause the code. So for this, I will just move the breakpoint a bit lower, so it's after we get the collided object, so we can add the condition, and check for the collided object, that name, and we have to make sure that it is equal to, and then I will copy the name of the object in Unity, and that's it, really simple condition, checking only for a specific coin, so it's only going to break the code at that point. So let's try to attach to Unity and play once more. So now as we collect the first coin, nothing should happen. We can see it's still increasing the score. And as we collide the second one, and yep, we can see the code has stopped. 
So let's try to go further in the code, see if we get inside of the if statement and we see that the first statement likely is the problem. So let's check, for example, the collided object and maybe we can see the layer in which it is. So we can see the collided object is on the layer zero. But if we check the pickup layer, this one we can see has a value of 256. Let's check the coin and we can see the layer is set to default. So this was a pretty trivial example. You could probably find this even without debugging, but it can certainly help. And one last thing you can do with the breakpoints is to add some actions, which is simply going to print some message here in the output. So if you right click the breakpoint, we go into actions. Here we can simply write some text that is going to be displayed inside of the output window. So this is quite similar to the debug.log, but it is not adding all the messages into Unity, which is not always convenient, because you may not want to have tons of messages there. So this is it for the breakpoints. But there are a couple more things we can do with Visual Studio when using it with Unity, such as opening the Unity API reference directly. So let's say that we are unsure about the Collider 2D. We don't know what all kind of properties it has and what we can do with it. So we may want to search Google and just see uh, the Unity API reference, but a simpler way we can do this is just to click help and open the Unity API reference. So this takes us straight to the Unity documentation and it already searched for the Collider 2D, so we can just choose the one that you want and take a look at the documentation. Pretty useful. And if you hate opening these scripts from Unity, I know it can be annoying jumping between Visual Studio, Unity, Visual Studio, there's one again simpler way. So in Visual Studio we can go to view, we can open the Unity Project Explorer, which again is going to add a new tab. And here, this is pretty much the copy of the folders we can see in Unity. It is containing all these scripts, so we can go into the assets, I will go into the Visual Studio Debugger, which is the folder for this example. And I can simply open really any of the files, you can see it's also pretty fast. There are two more useful features I want to show you with the debugging. So let's say if we are checking the code, we go through. And we missed something, we forgot to check for a value of a variable at a certain point, and so on. So what we can simply do, is we can drag the executed line, and say that we want to execute it again. This is not really moving the time back, it is just changing the executed line back where you want it. So now again, we can go through the code once more if we want, and we can do this over and over. And another useful thing you can do is to change values of variables directly from Visual Studio. You don't have to go to Unity and set up some testing button, which is going to change the value. You don't have to change it in Inspector. You can just hover over the variable you want to change. So let's say you want to change the score and you can simply type it in. So we can try to set the score to zero and you can see down at the bottom it changes as well. Or you can change it down here the same way. So this again can be really useful for debugging if you only want to go through some edge cases to check only for some specific values. I hope that from now on you are not going to be adding so many debug that logs into your code because it even takes longer time to debug, it is all messy or getting tons of messages and we are just trying to get lucky to find the place where the error is. If you don't find it you need to add more debug that logs which can be really annoying. I'm not sure why more people are not teaching about this because in most of the YouTube tutorials when someone is debugging something I see that they only use the debug that log. So I also didn't know about the Visual Studio's debugger, but I think really everyone should know about it, even beginners. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions for the future videos, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!